Deep in the heart of East Tennessee's mountains, you will find a life rivaled by a few little places. To me, these mountains mean I am home. As the hills, rivers, and valleys cut their way through the Appalachian wilderness, people found a way to create a life full of culture and southern hospitality. Meanwhile, as the people came, so did the trains. CSX is king in Nashville, Tennessee, connecting to the north in Kentucky, west to Memphis, and south to Alabama and Chattanooga. But in East Tennessee, centered around Knoxville, while you can find CSX as well, Norfolk Southern rolls the rails with the Knoxville West End District seeing a handful of trains, but the main traffic can be found just west of Knoxville, connecting Chattanooga to the north along the CNO and TP line. What brought me into Knoxville from Nashville on this trip was one of my favorite things in the fall, Tennessee Volunteers Football. I am a graduate of the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, and my Vols are off to a hot start right now, starting off 4-0, averaging over 50 points per game, and for the first game of the season, the Vols routed the Chattanooga Mock 69-3 in a crushing defeat to our sister campus in Chattanooga. But as for the time when football was not being played, I knew that I wanted to spend some time trackside, checking out some of the action of Norfolk Southern in and around Knoxville. On the morning of August 31st, 2024, before I headed to the stadium for the game, I was set up near Knoxville Safety City Playground along the Knoxville West District Line. The spot I had found seemed like a great angle to catch a train as the area had a large parking lot which was being used by a local construction crew for an apartment project nearby. As for the rail fanning, it was a very slow morning. While I was hearing chatter on the radio, it must have been coming from the nearby John Sevier yard as nothing came through. At one point, I did hear a horn nearby, but based on the direction, it was either something on CSX's KD Sub or the local Knoxville and Holston River Railroad Company, which I believe was what I might have heard. Upon leaving the game, there were two locomotives parked near the campus. However, after three hours of waiting, all that I seen pass by was some buses which were being used to take in workers for today's football game that parked off campus. So I packed up my gear and got in my truck to prepare to go to the football game and wouldn't you know it, just when I got comfy in my AC in the truck, I see NS8145 in my mirror leading the way of a Norfolk Southern SD70 Ace number 1038 in second taking a manifest train to John Sevier Yard. Now the next day, after staying up in Claiborne County, Tennessee, I made the journey back home towards Nashville, making a stop in Harriman, Tennessee at the Emory Gap Junction along the CNO and TP line, a spot where I had only been to only one other time before so far this year where I caught a tanker train, and to my shock and surprise, I had no clue how great the spot was going to be that day. As soon as I pulled up, parked patiently, awaiting their crew to take them up, go through the Y, and head back south was a coal train taking empties back from TVA steam plant along Watts Bar Lake, featuring two BNSF EMD foreign power locomotives at the front. Now, I'm no expert on Norfolk Southern and BNSF, but I can at least recognize how rare this truly is to see a BNSF SD70 Mac leading with an SD70 Ace in second this far into East Tennessee. I was going to wait as long as I needed to see this one move on. I thought it wouldn't take long originally, as shortly after my arrival, a PTI van pulled up with the crew who were set to come on board and take this train out. The crew climbed on board, preparing and inspecting their train before they could leave, and I've seen this before out along the rails by the cemetery in Nashville Plenty, but in this particular case, it would be well over two hours before the crew would leave, which I thought was pretty strange. So in the meantime, we did have some southbound traffic coming in, and you won't believe the insane amount of luck I had on this day, with the second catch especially. But up first, we have a manifest coming with a super clean NS AC44 C6M number 4859 leading the way, which is actually a former BNSF C44-9W itself, recently rebuilt this year.
Now, after that manifest train made its way through, I thought, hmm, maybe this coal train will finally get to moving. But no, we're still sitting here. The crew is fully in a train and ready to go. But nope, they're not ready to go. But then, the crossing activated. And I turned the camera to the north to see what was coming. And to my absolute shock, I couldn't believe my eyes as to what was coming when I saw red at the front of this Norfolk Southern locomotive. I knew instantly what this was coming. I have seen this locomotive online since it was unveiled this year and I really wanted a chance to catch this one. I just assumed it wouldn't be today though. Before I go rail fanning, I do check my Heritage Units app and this locomotive number 4822, the moving the weight of the world unit, had been reported south of Lexington, Kentucky over 9 hours from the time that I was on my way. So I just assumed it would be long gone south by the time I arrived. But alas, here it was, coming my way, coming to a stop right in front of my position. The traditionally white striping and horse logo at the front of this locomotive has been repainted to red and with a complimentary red striping on the side, with even more red highlights such as the front handrails and steps, this unit definitely stands out compared to the others in the Norfolk Southern Fleet, and you can't miss it if it's on your tracks. At the front of the locomotive it reads, thank you to our railroaders, and on the side it reads, grit, heart, and drive, truly honoring the spirit of the many men and women working to move the freight and weight of the world through Norfolk Southern. This may not be everyone's favorite locomotive, but to me this is a beautiful locomotive and I consider myself very blessed to have had the opportunity to see it. And if you've never filmed a train in the rain, definitely be careful, don't ruin your equipment, but in this case it was worth it and the end result was some amazing footage seeing those thick raindrops coming down around the locomotive as it makes its way south after the crew stopped in at the yard office just for a few minutes.
Now after that manifest with the unique power made its way through, the skies were seemingly clearing as this particular rainstorm was brief. It was heavy, but it was brief and after it passed, I took a minute to film my raw thoughts after catching this unique locomotive. As you can see, I'm pretty well soaked. I've got my rain jacket on. And when I pulled up here, I was just happy to find this coal train with two EMD BNSF units at the front. This morning, I checked the Heritage Units app and I saw that here on the CNO and TP line, about 11 hours ago, it was reported that NS4822 was headed southbound. I thought maybe there's a chance, but I've also figured he probably went through way late in the night or early this morning. I didn't think I'd actually catch him. So when I looked to my right and I saw him coming around the corner and I realized it had the red front on it, you talk about a giddy rail fan here. For a guy who stays in CSX country most of the time, to actually get this lucky and catch not only foreign power, but also a really new and rare unit on the NS lines, that one was really cool. Watch out for that one, because it's very beautiful, very freshly painted, very clean, and it's paying tribute to the railroaders. So watch out for that one. The skies continued to move and change all around me as the storms continued to move northeast all around Tennessee, and on occasion a clap of thunder can be heard, but I really wanted to get the payoff of waiting on this BNSF coal train. Then finally, at 1.19 p.m., after hours of patiently waiting, me and a couple of other rail fans who had showed up heard the sound of those EMD engines firing up, and a train was set for a slow roll forward, as it would be going into Harriman to complete a turnaround on the Y before heading south towards Chattanooga, and after a day of watching Big Orange football, it was finally time to see the Big Orange train make its way through.
attached to the rear of this train was not foreign power, but rather NS4373, as it helped push this long train of TVAX coal cars up the tracks, and as this train progressed through, the rain began to keep on pouring, which meant I was ready to move on and perhaps find a new location to film. So I hit the road towards Rockwood, Tennessee. And along the way, just as I got outside of Harriman, I saw a northbound manifest coming, and I quickly realized perhaps why our coal train was held so long. Because they were actually sending four northbound trains all shortly behind the other. So while the coal train was given their time to complete the Y, they wanted to be sure that there was enough time for these four trains to move through. And as I got into Rockwood, train number two was already here, a rather short intermodal train with only a single locomotive at the front and a long cut of bareback cars at the end. It wasn't the greatest of film this one from the truck, but it's all I had. Now where I eventually found the setup in Rockwood isn't specifically labeled as a rail park, but it most certainly can be used as one. Right in the middle of town was a beautiful small park with plenty of street parking available with a nice covered pavilion, which was perfect for me with the threat of more rain and storms still in the area. And in no time, I heard the horns from the south as next train was arriving, a manifest train led at the front by NS4116. After that one made its way through, the skies were looking more and more ominous than they had all day as it looked like the bottom was soon to fall out, but it held out just long enough for us to grab one more train, as a very unique northbound unit train of all gondolas was making its way through, led by EMD SD78 number 1203, even offering us a little double tap on the horn to say hello.
do it for our time on Rocky Top, rail fanning some of the great trains that Norfolk Southern had to offer us as we went back towards Nashville, and the following day, which was Labor Day, I returned to my usual go-to at the cemetery to take in a couple of manifests that passed their way through that morning. It is certainly not something that I get to do often, but to me, in my humble rail fanning opinion, better trains and sights to see as a rail fan may very well be over in East Tennessee on those Norfolk Southern rails. I definitely want to go back sometime and see some more spots, and I hope you enjoyed this rail fitting adventure of Danny B today. If you're new, be sure to leave a like on this video, and be sure to subscribe to the channel to never miss a new video right here on Danny B Trains. If you've been watching this channel for the Trains 22 content as well, thank you, but unfortunately I have a sad update for you guys. My computer that I use for operating trains, which is not the same one that I edit on, has gone into BitLocker protection mode, and we have exhausted all options to find the recovery code. And sadly, it appears that there is going to be no way to get into it, as my computer, which I got in 2022, was set up using my former school email address at the University of Tennessee shut down, and it is impossible to get into it now. Therefore, what it appears we will need to do is take the computer into somebody to have Windows completely reinstalled, meaning it will have to be reset as essentially a brand new computer system. Meaning, yes, I have lost all of my data, including the routes I was building, and I'm especially sad to see the AI route go away, as we were having so much fun with that one, and it offered us so much potential to keep growing the channel even more. I will be getting Trains 22 back as soon as possible, and perhaps we can start over on a new AI route, maybe based somewhere else this time. But for now, we will have to just simply reset, refresh, and take it one step at a time, and this gives me a chance to focus on some rail fanning videos. I keep all of my rail fanning files safe on Dropbox, so I have not lost any of those and we can still put out some rail fan videos that are in the archives while we get the gaming computer sorted out. But until next time, thanks for coming along with me. I appreciate it, and I hope you have a great day. Bye guys.